In this video, I'm going to make a trestle table with a bit of a modern take on it, and I'm going to use pecan wood. Uh, I've got plenty of pecan. Some of it's got some rot in it that I probably won't be able to sell it, and I've got plenty of slabs, so I think I'll do a live edge top. So the first thing I need to do is cut some of the slabs up into manageable pieces. I'm going to go with 6 inches by 36 inches and get them prepped and ready for the CNC. There's nothing there for you to eat. It took three slabs to get the pieces I needed. And then I took them and put them through the bandsaw to get them closer to their final dimension. And then after that, I put them through the joiner to get a flat bottom and a square edge. And then it was back to the bandsaw to resaw them closer to their final dimension. Hey! I'm not sure what happened there, but it was like when I'm using my sawmill and I hit a piece of steel that's in a log. Uh, the blade comes to an abrupt stop, ruins the blade. Uh, I checked that piece of wood. I don't see any steel in there. There was quite a bit of resistance when I was feeding it in through the bandsaw. Um, the blade is about three months old and I did, I have put a lot of wood through it. So it was just probably just dull. So I've got another blade here to get me through. I still wanted to get these pieces down to an inch and a half, so I took them down to my sawmill and uh, a little overkill and got them down to an inch and a half. I'm going to start putting these pieces through the CNC to get the individual pieces I need. And I ordered a new carbide tip blade for the bandsaw, uh, but it won't be here for a while, so I picked up one in my local woodcraft to get me through for a while until it arrives. Well, I've run everything through the CNC. Uh, unfortunately, I can't cut them completely out. These pieces are an inch and a half thick. I can only cut to one inch deep uh, with my quarter inch bit. So once I was done, I ran everything through the planer to its final thickness. Then it was off to the bandsaw to cut the pieces out and then to the router table with a template bit to clean up the profile. If you didn't have a CNC, you could simply just use a template cut the pieces out on a bandsaw, and then use a template bit on a router table. I've got almost everything cleaned up with the router template bit, but one of my pieces has some bark inclusion in it, and I need to stabilize that with some epoxy, and I'll do that tonight before I leave the shop. But I think you can see where I'm going here. These are my two base pieces. These are the parts that are gonna hold the top. Each piece it consists of different pieces. The two outside ones are the same, but the middle piece has a cutout in it, so this is going to be like a mortise. And I will sandwich that in between these two outside pieces. And then my upright will slot into that. And to finish up tonight, I'm just going to start taping up some pieces and get ready to pour some epoxy. Well, it looks like the epoxy is dried overnight. Uh, I use the Total Boat epoxy, the tabletop stuff. I find that that's the best for filling cracks. And I use a mica powder. Uh, because I feel that the liquid stains the wood more. So I've got my trusty scraper here and I'm going to just clean these up. I went ahead and mixed up some more epoxy and I touched up some more bits. And while that's drying, I'm going to work on the upright portions. Uh, I was originally going to use four quarter or one inch thick red oak, but I think that would look out of proportion because the bases are going to be quite thick and the tabletop is going to be quite thick. You know, it's going to be live edge, so about two inches thick. Uh, so using four quarter or one inch thick red oak probably wouldn't look very good. So I'm going to double that. I have a slab of red oak over there. Got quite a bit of cupping to it. So I'm going to drag that out, cut it in half, dimension it, glue it back together like a panel, and then I'll cut it up the proportions I need tomorrow.
So if this right edge of my workbench would be the floor, and this side of this ruler is the top, and the top's going to be two inches thick, and this is likely two inches thick. So if I make that at 30 inches, since a tabletop is for a dining room table is anywhere between 28 and 32, I'm just going to go for the middle. So that's 30. That's my top piece in the bottom. So 25 and a half inches for the total length, and then I gotta make the tenants. My upright pieces are cut to their final width and height. Uh, I am gonna taper them, and I still need to figure out how I'm going to do a proper tenon on them. Uh, so I want to get my base and top pieces glued together. So I'm just gonna scrape that touch up of epoxy I did yesterday. I have everything grouped uh, how I want it. So I've numbered them. I've also put registration marks on there so that I can always get them back to the same orientation. I wanted to glue these up tonight, but I'm having second thoughts because I think it might be nice to have access to these middle pieces here, which will receive the tenon when I'm laying out the tenons on these upright pieces. I have these numbered now to correspond with the individual pieces. And I think even though they're going to taper, it's gonna be easier to manage them and cut the tenons uh, with them still rectangle. So cutting that slight taper is gonna be the last thing I do. I'm using my marking gauge to measure the mortise and put the corresponding mark on the upright piece for the tenons. What I've done to make sure I can get the tenon in the center of this piece is I have a dual marking gauge here. And there's a couple of adjustments I can make. One is the width of the tenon, and the other is where it falls onto the piece of wood. So I used my mortise piece, and I set the width of my tenon using that. And then with this same piece, putting that on the side of the wood just for ease of the example, the difference here is one inch. So if I divide that by two, I get a half an inch. So I just put a mark here at a half an inch, and then the second adjustment on the shoulder, the marking gauge, I just set that to the line I just made, and that should get us close to the center. I'll just make sure that I reference the same side of the board all the way around. I've got everything marked up, but I don't think I'm gonna cut the tenons tonight. Tomorrow's another day. I'm here at my table saw. I've got a dado stack in there, but I was just thinking, I may have made this harder than I needed to. I probably should have left these pieces a little bit longer, cut a rabbit or rebate in them, and that way I'd have a shoulder on the far end of the tenon to rest like a router plane on there or even a router, and you would have had two surfaces to register the tool on rather than just one and I think that might have been easier, but that ship has sailed. So uh, I'm just going to have to, I'm still going to try using the router plane, variety of stuff. Uh, I'm kind of in new territory here, but what I will do is just creep up on the lines. Uh, I'm not going to cut to them, and I will finish it off with chisels and planes. <laughs> I've been looking at a couple different options for my taper, and what I've settled on is at the base, it's gonna be 10 and a half inches. At the top, it's gonna to be eight and a half inches. So I've already marked up this one here. I'm gonna do the same to this one, and then I think I'll cut this on the bandsaw.
That went pretty well. I had just about all my hand tools out there to see what would work for me. But by the end of it, uh, I was only using a few tools and there was a big difference between the first one I did and the last one I did. It was very handy to have these available, so I'm glad I didn't glue them up. But I think we're at that point where we're ready to glue up those parts. To keep the parts from sliding around once I apply the glue, I'm going to put a dowel right through them before I clamp them. I made a bunch of pegs the right length and then I put a little point on them with my disc sander. So I've got those ready to go. These are the pieces here and I don't mind glue squeeze out everywhere else but I don't want a bunch on the inside pocket so I'm going to give that a wide berth. The glue is set up over the weekend. I've got a variety of hand tools here I'm going to use just to trim the dowels and break the edges. Uh, just kind of clean up everything. Get it ready for a bit of a final sanding outside. Now it's time for the uprights. So I just need to clean up the sides because I cut these on the bandsaw. I'm going to use the jack plane for that. And then uh, I will try my infill plane uh, on the sides and the, the face of it. See how that works. I gotta say I'm really happy with how that worked with the hand planes. If I was putting a finish on this, I wouldn't sand it at all. Uh, normally, I have issues with my hand planes. I think mostly because I'm trying to uh, use them on uh, pecan or pecan. <laughs> Somebody came and bought some wood for me yesterday and uh, uh, they asked me what I was working with and I told them I was working with pecan and they knew Right away, I'm not from here. Uh, it's, I was corrected. It's pecan. Um, anyways, yeah, really nice how this turned out. Uh, I think, yeah, it's red oak, so that it's a nice straight grain. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to move on to the other one now. I want to start cleaning up my tenons now, and I've got my router plane. Uh, so Remember when I said I should have left these boards long and just done like a rabbit and then I'd have uh, a piece at the end for the router plane to rest on? Well, it occurred to me I could just use the other piece because it's the same thickness. So I just clamped that to the board there. I've clamped this one. I've got it set, so I'm just going to clean it up and then start taking it down incrementally. I just used my little block plane to put a chamfer on the tenon. And let's do a little test fit here. That went in really easy. Maybe too easy? I am going to pin it with a, a dowel and, uh, and a little bit of glue, I think. But yeah, wow. Three more to do.
I'm very happy with the way things fit. Uh, it looks really good. I Again, I'm going to paint this part black. I've got some gluing I need to do here where the red oak is splitting a bit, so I'll just glue that and clamp it overnight. But I'm going to take these pecan bits outside and give them a sanding, and uh, that'll finish up for tonight. Tomorrow I need to think about the stretcher going between these two, uh, so I'll work on that and probably start on the tabletop as well. So yesterday when I wrapped up, I realized that I was just a couple pieces short of the cherry dowel, so when it comes time to pin uh, everything together, I was short. So I had to go to Woodcraft, get another cherry dowel, which reminds me of my old boss that used to say, proper prior planning prevents a piss poor performance, uh, which for that little nugget of wisdom, you should like and subscribe. Uh, but I got down here early this morning, I cut the stretcher out of another piece of red oak slab, and it has a nice little curvature to it, so I think I will leave that on what edge. And I took everything else outside, and I sanded it to 220. I'm still trying to decide the best way to cut the tenons because they're going to be quite long. These pieces here are two inches thick, and I want them to be about five inches long, and if they're too long, I'll just cut a bit off. Uh, but I, I need to lay it out, so I'm going to measure in five inches on either side and use my marking knife and ruler and lay it out. I'm here at the table saw. I've got my stretcher. My layout lines are five inches from the ends because my tens are going to be five inches. I don't want to run such a long piece along the fence. So I've got my one, two, three block here. I've set it up so that it's just slightly less than five inches from the edge of the block to the outside of the dado stack. And I'll use my miter gauge. I'll come in, I'll hit the stop block, and then I'll go across the dado stack to remove the waste. You can see here I had to turn my miter gauge around so it was still registering off the flat side and not the live edge side. It would be too difficult to get this live edge as part of the tenon, so I'm just going to make my tenon about 5 inches tall, and I'm going to use the bandsaw to cut it down. I used the CNC to cut the mortises in these upright pieces. It was pretty thick, I couldn't get all the way through, got within about a quarter of an inch. So I had to drill some holes, connect the dots, use my jigsaw to cut out that little piece, and then over to the router table with a template routing bit, and that just cleaned up the inside. While I had the CNC going, I cut some more pieces out of some thinner poplar bits, and I will use these as uh, what I would call go, no-go gauges, as I'm shaping the tenons on my stretcher. Ah, uh, you... Yep, I chipped it.
Oh yeah, that sticks out too far. I've got my stretcher here, my mortiser. I marked where the stretcher goes through the upright pieces, and I've drawn a little box, and I'm just going to chisel that out with the mortiser. Well, I'm ready to glue this thing together, which is good because I'm tired of working on it. So I'd like to move on to the top. So I'm just gonna glue it up. If I can open my glue. The last thing I'm going to do today is drill and pin the tenons in each of these pieces. Uh, I've marked it out already. I've got a piece of tape on my drill bit so I don't go through my little backer piece and into my worktop, which would be sad. I put the dowels in the drill and I'm going to sand them a little bit. This morning I flush cut the dowels that were coming through. And I put a bit of tape on there just to protect the finish and just did a quick uh, 220 sand on them. Now, I was going to originally uh, stain or paint these black. And I did a little test piece. And it's there's a black stain here and a very dark stain here. And I didn't like either one. So I'm just going to go with it as is. It's time to move on to the top. So I'm going to drag some slabs out into the front and have a look at them and see what the, which way we're going to go. I'd like this table to have live edges, but it's not really that much of a requirement. And it's not going to be a lot of epoxy. So what I'm going to do is cut the usable parts of these boards into strips. And I'll end up laminating it together. And if I can use the live edges, I will. If not, it's no big loss. And my table is only going to be about 64 inches long. We don't do a lot of entertaining. We do more card playing on our table. So having a shorter table is preferable. What's going on, buddy? Don't pee on my table, whatever you do. Watch out. Yeah, you stripped that bark off for me. How about that? Would that be okay? I like that one and that one, like to be the two outside ones. And I'd fill it with black epoxy. Black. Hmm. How about dark brown? No. Why? Why not dark brown? Dark brown? 
orient the table differently. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I like that better. What do you think? I mean, look at this. Is it is this spalting? What is this called right here? Yes, it's that's called spalting. spalting. Very good. <laughs> Give it up top. Yay. I like it. Okay. So I didn't want to spend all day on the planter and the joiner. So I loaded up the pieces of wood into my midlife crisis vehicle and I took them to my bandsaw. And I used it to just kind of carve them up a little bit and save myself a bit of time on the joiner and the planter. Now I'm back in the shop and I'm going to start joining them. I've got the four pieces that make up the top laid out. I numbered them one through four. And what I did is I kind of bookmatched them. So I clamped them together and then ran them through the jointer, clamped together like that. And that way you get a nice joint. A um, friend of mine gave me that little top tip. Uh, but I have a little problem child here. This one, I cannot get flat. And just running it through the planer is not gonna help. So I think what I'll do is I will clamp it up into the CNC and just do a little flattening program on it. And then I will have to finish off the ends uh, with a plane uh, because my CNC is only four feet long and this is about 66 inches long right now. Well, that took care of our problem, but now we have to plane everything else down about a quarter of an inch. Uh, but it's not going to happen today. I felt this project was getting a little long in the tooth by this point. I already had these dovetails pre-programmed into my CNC. So I took the lazy way out and I let the CNC do the work. The thick set epoxy showed up in the mail today. I thought I said there wasn't going to be a lot of epoxy in this table. It's not going to be a lot of epoxy. I got overridden. I like that one and that one. But uh, this is the top of the table. So I'm going to cover it with a house wrap tape. And then just to support the tape to keep it from giving away, I'm going to put this kind of a dense foam on it. Put a piece of wood on top of that and I'll just clamp that in place and hopefully that'll keep uh, keep it from leaking. Okay, it's been a couple of days. It came out pretty well. There's a couple of issues. Uh, when I clamped the foam to this one here, I thought maybe the foam, because I clamped a piece of wood behind it, that it would push into the the recess or the void a little bit. And I think it did it. So there's a little bit of a recess right here, but not bad, I'll take that out. And then where I covered this larger one here with all the tape, the over the span of the gap, there was the, the tape kind of had little valleys to it. And I, I thought maybe the epoxy weight might take that out, but it didn't. So there's a little bit of a wave there, uh, but I'm just gonna take them outside Give them a good sanding with some heavy grit just to get rid of all the sticky stuff. 
Once again, the trusty scraper was the way to go to get rid of that tape residue. Then the boards came back inside and I touched up the epoxy one more time. It looks like my secondary pour, just to even the top out, might have worked. So I'm going to scrape it, and hopefully it did, and I can put this tabletop together. I'm going to put about four dominoes in between each joint just to help align the top for when I'm gluing it up. Actually, it makes more sense to glue up these two and these two and then do this one. After gluing up the four pieces into two sections, the time came to glue the two sections into the tabletop. Oh, fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. After doing a bit of scraping to get rid of the glue residue, I trimmed the tabletop to its final dimensions, and then I started to do the sanding. Between each of the grits, I put down some pencil marks, and that way I knew I was done with that particular grit and it covered the entire tabletop. I also only water pop between the 150 and the 180 grits. Since the pecan is a lighter color wood and I want to keep it that way, I'm not going to use an oil-based finish. Any type of oil-based, like a wax oil or oil-based poly, is going to give it that orangey-yellow hue, and I don't want that. So I'm just going to go with a water-based poly, which will keep it from doing that. And I want the finish to end up a satin finish, but I'm going to build it up with a gloss. You don't want to do multiple coats of a satin finish because it'll keep making the wood duller and duller as you build more coats. So the gloss finish is completely clear. So you want to build up your coats with that and then finish off with your satin finish. I'm also using just a sponge applicator. Uh, I've been moving to these rather than using a brush uh, or, or sponge brush because I think you get a better finish. It's nice and flat. The staining pad worked pretty good. I can still see a few kind of streaks, uh, but it's pretty flat. It left a pretty nice finish. I'm going to flip it over and seal the bottom uh, because I do want to get a couple more coats on the top, but I want to get the bottom sealed. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to use a brush on the bottom just for a comparison. After comparing the sponge side to the brush side, I didn't see enough of an improvement to justify wasting a pair of gloves every time I put a coat of something on a piece of wood. So for now, it's back to the brush. I'm using the figure eight fasteners to fasten the tabletop to the base. The ones I got through Amazon, they were pretty cheap, not very good quality. The holes were not in the center. Uh, so I, I think on my next batch, I'm going to look for a better quality one. But the installation is pretty simple. You drill a hole, chisel out the sides, screw the figure eight fastener in there, and that allows the table to expand and contract.
Well, that's it. The table's complete. Uh, it was a bit of a marathon uh, project, but I enjoyed most of it. Uh, I learned I don't like really working with epoxy too much. Um, so no river tables for me. But it's complete. I really like it. Uh, so I'm going to move it up to the house. But to finish off the video, I'm going to end up with some nice photos of it. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.